This is our continued series of conversations with people who are working on creativity in service of NAMI's mission. Today, we're very fortunate to have two remarkable young artists, Meredith O'Connor and Ricardo Banks. Let's start by having you say hello and introducing yourself. I let the lady go. Uh, what? You He's go, Meredith. Polite. Okay. I'll let the lady go, right? A gentleman, a gentleman to <laughs> Thank the you. Um, thank you. Well, I'm so happy to be here with, um, first of all, Ricardo Banks, who's one of, I believe, the leading voices um, in music today. And, and I'm, I'm so grateful for his participation as well as other artists, including, um, you know, myself. So I'm, I'm obviously a singer and um, do a lot of anti-bullying advocacy. But prior to this project, I hadn't um, spoken up about what I went through um, with OCD and anxiety and I'm really excited to be here uh, working alongside NAMI. Um, so thank you, Dr. Ken, for, for your time and of course as well. Well, Meredith, I think it's really important for people to recognize the people they admire, identify with, and enjoy their creative production have these ordinary human conditions. And we'll talk more about anxiety and OCD a little later, but let's do a placeholder on that because these are common treatable conditions and NAMI's done a lot of advocacy to promote that. Is that all right, Meredith? So yeah, we'll that come, sounds great. We'll come back to that later. So Ricardo, we're very fortunate to be having a conversation with you all the way from Nigeria today. So I wanna thank you for your international commitment. Tell me yeah, a little bit that. about your work and what it means to you. Um, my work as a, as a musician is to you know, entertain and to speak up, as I have re recently um, understood that I that, that my voice isn't just for isn't just for like it could be for so many other things like, and that includes you know informing the people about real life situations like what um, we're doing on this project, anxiety, talking about mental awareness, and you know it, it's just really exciting how much. How much the, the, my voice can can do, and um, like I was saying, <laughs> I'm really happy to be a part of it. That's great. That's great. So yeah. Meredith, tell us about the song you've been working on that you know sure. you're going to be presenting, and Nami's happy to listen to and learn from and promote. Yes, um, I'm so grateful for the work that Nami's done uh, with. The COVID-19 situation calls, the helplines have been increasingly important. And this song is, um, Nami is the beneficiary and I am so honored to have that relationship with them. So prior to that, I was a person who in middle school got bullied a lot. And then I had a song go viral on YouTube and my life completely changed. I was going on world tours. I was getting stopped in the street. And um, I, the craziest part of it was the hundreds of thousands of messages from people saying that they felt alone because they also were bullied. And that was sort of what started me realizing that you're not alone. Um, learning that, first of all, other people have OCD, which is a separate topic, um, but also other people go through feeling isolated and they go through yeah. feeling uh, hopeless, but it does get better and other people have gone through it as well and feeling like you're the only one going through it can make it so much scarier so that's sort of why i wanted to write this song um and having other celebrities on it really is been my favorite part so far because of people like ricardo banks and um using their voice for such powerful causes is one of the best parts about this 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 um message and getting it uh out for them. that's great so ricardo what's your part of this collaboration um, I wasn't able to write any part of it, but I'm just glad to be a part of, of the voices that would be, uh, attached, that will be related with this, with this course. And, you know, I'm also ready to be, to be a part of everything else that's aside the music, you know, reaching out to the people, helping, just, you know, being there in, in person, in flesh, and just, you know, being a part of it consistently. Thank you. So Meredith, you know, you are not alone is one of the NAMI kind of go-to uh, statements, right? Because people who have mental health conditions frequently feel 
isolated. They feel yeah. ashamed. They can't communicate their experience, which are ordinary uh, human experiences happening to millions of people every single day. Exactly. So tell me a little bit about it. You're thinking about the bullying and you are not alone and the mental health, or is it more one or the other, or is it kind of the whole idea that people are connected and connection yeah. is soothing? Um, I think, well, going through when, uh, like when, okay, so when I had feeling isolated while having OCD, and um, I guess the connection with bullying is that I have post-traumatic stress disorder from the physical abuse and the verbal abuse and the, um, yeah, it was, it was uh, very, very tough growing up with uh, in a fishbowl thinking like everybody will tell you, or everyone, you know, your peers will tell you you're not good or you're ugly or you're this or you're that, and then you grow up and you believe it. Um, and I think that having PTSD and, and going and or I'm not having it, but over working through it, yeah. I should say, um, has been even more hard and scary when you think you're the only one that deals with yes. it. Um, so the isolation, as you mentioned, makes it so much harder and scarier, but yeah. knowing like once I learned, and I'm just speaking about, you know, my condition, once I learned that OCD, for instance, ha ha is a thing, like other people have it, other people get better from it. For me, that made me feel less alone, less scary, less yes. hopeless. So I've that many people, you know, when I get a diagnosis, you know, a diagnosis can be bad news, but it can also be yeah. freeing. It's like, I haven't made this all up. There's yeah, a, like, oh, there's... There's scientific intervention for it. Exactly, exactly. Like, oh, so that this makes sense. This is what it is. Hmm. Ricardo, tell me a little bit about, you know, your music and its connection to things like social justice and, you know, some of the things that you've been working on. Um, like I said earlier, more recently, I've, I've understood the reason, the, the um, importance of using my voice to talk on different other topics besides just entertainment. Mm -hmm. And uh, more recently, I, I dropped a, a new project that I was really just talking about different societal um, topics. I was touching on character flaws, I was touching on police brutality, I was I was touching on life generally, I was touching mm -hmm. on reality more often than I usually would in my music. And mm -hmm. it just feels this is a liberating this it feels like a liberating time for me. I feel like I'm just able to see everything and anything on my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just so exciting that all this stuff on my mind is good stuff and it's just stuff that's going to better the world. So I, yeah. I'm not even hesitating to, you know, put all of this out. That's great. It's great. You have a gift and you want to share it. And one right, thing on right. that note is, um, Ricardo, like what you just said is sort of in inspiring because it reminded me of like the fact that you have this fame and this platform and you're using it for things that you want to be said reminds me of exactly why I started the my advocacy, because I grew up without other pop stars to look up to, right? Like I would turn on the TV yeah. And, I, and on the radio and the messages that came out, it wasn't music with a cause. It wasn't really, you know, 10, 15 years ago, it was, um, I wanted to know I wasn't alone. I wanted to turn on the radio and, and there were things that I wish were out there that, that pop stars are doing. So similar to yourself, once once I had a platform, I was like, this is the chance to, to use mm. my work for that cause. So that's why I'm so happy to, to be working with you on, on this project um, because you've used your platform to, for such in, you know, important messages. It's really the integration of your creativity and a social mission is what I hear, right? Your musical creativity and you know, the idea that you're doing something in service to people. Yeah, I think being the role model that I wish I had is really what drives yeah. me a lot. Um, but I, I really, I, when we when we started this project, selecting, you know, thinking, looking at artists from around the world that we're also yeah. using that was really important. Yeah, this is a NAMI thing. Be the change you want to see in the world, right? And you two are being that change, right? Hello. Hi, Ricardo. We lost you for a second. Ricardo, I wanted to ask you about how the pandemic is playing out in Nigeria. What you're learning 
from that. If you feel that connecting with people through music is an important way to keep the human flow going, because it's been a difficult time for a lot of people around the world. Mental health problems are higher. Suicide rates are increasing. Overdoses increasing. People are battling without the contact and connection. Can you tell us a little bit how you think about that? Yeah, I can't tell. I can't tell how how hard it is anywhere else, but um, back here it's a little hard because you know majority of the people live under the poverty level, and in this time where they are locked down and you know as to stay in the in the, in their houses because of their health, obviously, which is which is very important. Yes, uh, the government decided. The government has decided to, you know, be greedy with, with, um, you know, with funds and just, you know, helping the people out. They just, you know, left the people alone. So this time is really tough on the people. And with my music and with my, uh, I don't know, just by myself, I was able to, you know, reach out to a few people. The other day, I went, I went out on the streets and I was handing. And I was handing uh, care packages to people that I felt, you know, needed this type of stuff. And, you know, definitely the music is what inspired all of this. And, and that's why we can't, you know, underplay the, the importance of music in this period. Yes. So uh, I'm just really happy to, to, be, to be an instrument for it. That's fabulous. It's fantastic. Meredith, let's talk a little bit about the treatment that you've had and how you're doing, because it sounds like, you know, through the bullying, you developed multiple vulnerabilities, and it sounds like you've coped really well with them. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, I mean, I think it was just weird for my life to do a 360 to um, go from being bullied to, like, stopped in the street. And then I think that what NAMI is doing is really important, I mean, with by actually, you know, offering a helpline, putting out this message, you are not alone, yeah. alongside this, the the helpline that that they're doing, I think is really important for people who might also be going through that. But um, yeah, getting, I, I think that the treatment that for me that really was incredible and um, life save is changing was the was therapy, obviously. Um, and realizing, you know, like in the lyrics of the song, to feel it, to face it, that all takes courage. I think, you know, it could be really hard to take the steps needed, um, but it's also possible. And I'm really hopeful that um, people who may feel hopeless know that there is hope and a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm, nice. That's great. Yeah, psychotherapy is pretty effective. For yeah. Obsessive compulsive disorder for a lot of anxiety disorders. And a specialized kind of psychotherapy is also helpful for post-traumatic stress, right? So it really sounds like you have developed some coping strategies and ways of approaching these challenges. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think that that's, that's definitely the powerful part about, um, about therapy is realizing that, that it can get better. Um, and, and something that people don't know is, or something that I've never talked about before publicly is how the bullying and the, the OCD were related. I think yeah. without the conversation on it, um, because there was such a stigma against um, having compulsions or just people weren't educated and didn't know yeah. about it. So I think like when I would do something that was abnormal, um, or a compulsion or something like that, instead of getting support. And this is a long time ago before, prior to a lot of the wonderful ad advocacy of, of, of NAMI. Um, but it was just, there was a stigma. So I think the bullying and uh, made it worse. And then the compulsions got, so it almost fed each other, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. so, so I think that's why these conversations are so important. It's important because there's shame that people feel you know, I shouldn't have this experience or I shouldn't be having symptoms, but there's also prejudice from other people, right? People who don't appreciate that, you know, for instance, when you're bullied, you're likely to have some psychological responses and some of them are going to be pretty powerful in some cases. Yeah. Like for instance, you might, at least in my case and, and in actually in the millions of others of, of people who, who've written to me or who I've gotten to know, I mean, it's easy to 
think that what they're saying is true, especially if you're a nine-year-old or if you're vul mm -hmm. particularly vulnerable to you know, your peers approval and they don't approve of you, right? Like the first thing you yeah. might do is blame yourself. And I've seen this in, in um, other situations where, um, or, or any relationship where abuse is involved, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've learned about how, how some common patterns are, you'll blame yourself. And um, I've seen that in, in bullying, people will blame themselves. And that's the most heartbreaking thing. Right. You, have, you know, when you have somebody that's so beautiful or and they think they're ugly some someone who's so brilliant and they think they're not smart and and you see these tragedies unfold because they believe what they internalize what what has been said to them right. so i think that that's that to me that's sort of why i, I get so passionate about yes um, it's great now what was your experience when you recruited other musicians to join in with a song time. about not being alone what was the what was your process or experience with that yeah, um, so a lot of it was, um, I think a lot of it was research. I think um, wanting to incorporate um, voices, some of the most prominent voices from around the world was very important to me um, because especially with the messaging saying you are not alone, I think it, it goes beyond the United States. It's, it's, a, yes. it's literally a universal message. Um, it's a universal human problem and experience and opportunity. Exactly, exactly. And I, I think that that was sort of part of the reason that I wanted to, um, that I'm really honored and excited that we have so many voices and celebrities and prominent other celebrities and prominent voices from around the world joining. Um, Do you I think know, people got it right away? Do you people think that, you know, the musicians you recruited, did they appreciate that connection is essential yeah, I, for I, mental health and well, their creativity? Throughout my career, I've gotten the chance to work with other celebrities um, that have also really loved what I'm doing and that have said, you know, like, um, you know, like, this is really important. I want to do a song with you or something like that. And I've worked with, you know, Garrett Clayton and a few other people. And, and it's really been awesome to meet people who also are using their voice for um, for good. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, in in doing this, I think in my career, in finding how much my message resonates with how many other people have experienced what, what I yes. talk about on stage and on TV, I think that's been the most amazing part of this all because that's when people then will, um, in doing that, I think that's when, when I've learned that people um, really are not alone. So to answer your question, I think this project was inspired by the um, by the people that have spoken up and stood up with me and yeah. said like, yeah, this is really important. Um, and then we just expanded it. We expanded it beyond the States, beyond um, the roster that we already had. And and um, we now, I'm so excited to be working with um, a giant uh, roster of people from all over the world, including Minzy from South Korea, who's a big K-pop star. and. Um, Really, just getting the chance to work with other other celebrities throughout my career has really shown me how important it is and how to to share the message that this is not an isolated issue. Um, the feeling of hopelessness uh, or the feeling pretty of amazing how you've taken your experience and made it into a worldwide, ex you know, conversation and experience where people can recognize in the music. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I think that's also, I mean, I have had the, I've been lucky enough to, um, I mean, to be honest, when I first went viral, there were all different directions, record labels had wanted to take my music, but I uh, sort of realized like, since my life is so different now, um, I think it, it's, only telling and only fair that I that I use this chance to to be the role model I wish I had. Fantastic. Um, and so and so that's sort of how how it all started. But yeah. um, getting the chance to work with NAMI is great because of the fact that they're and especially in COVID-19 um, when this need is is rising. I mean the You Are Not Alone campaign that we're doing together mm -hmm. is backed by this helpline that literally is there for someone to provide to, to show them that they're not alone and guide them in, in ways that will help. So I, I think it's really um, a wonderful. It won't back. surprise you that the helpline business is way up as people mm -hmm. are distressed in the mental health quote system end quote, which isn't really a system, you know, is challenging for people to navigate. We get a lot of volume and we have a lot of great volunteers. These are people giving their time and their loving people that don't know who 
who are taking calls and trying to help them navigate a very difficult system. So it's really fantastic that you're doing this. So Ricardo, what is next for you? Um, what's next for me, first of all, is, um, you know, getting through 2020, <laughs> getting into 2021. Yeah, let's but, get through this year. It can't, it can't <laughs> get much worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. First of all, uh, I'm looking to put out my album. It's going to be my second album in, in summer of next year. So mm -hmm. I'm really working on that art. Right. I intend to go to London in January to to go record that album. Uh, so that's like something I'm really looking forward to. I can't wait for that. And, you know, as uh, concerning the conversation, um, I'm I'm going to be consistent in my in my attitude, in my you know way of life, and just you know keep keeping the people aware, and you know keep doing my best to make everybody you know, to make the world a better place. So mm. this, this is not just a next step for me. It's, it's going to be a forever team. <laughs> nice, nice. So Meredith, uh, before we stop, I'm going to ask Ricardo the same things. Uh, do you have any last comments for people watching our little conversation uh, for them to think about? Meredith, why don't you uh, start? Well, Ricardo, why don't you start? And we'll go, we'll finish with Meredith. Go ahead, Mer Ricardo. I don't even know what to say for them to think about right now, but um, I would say um, we should all just try and make the world a better place. You know, starting from ourselves. Don't ignore the bad signs. Don't ignore your wrongs. You know, just be accountable for yourself. Stay responsible, and you know, don't don't try to make it any tougher because it's already tough. Yeah. All right. How about you, Meredith? What are your kind of parting words for the people watching our little conversation? My parting words is I'm um, so, you know, grateful for um, for the work that NAMI is doing. And I agree with what Ricardo said 100%. Um, and also, I think in this new year, as 2020 comes to a close, I think mm -hmm. it is very important that we um, that we instill this message of you are not alone because a lot of people may be feeling otherwise isolated. And I feel like that is um, something I'm very passionate and excited about with this, with this project. So thank you again for everyone's time. Meredith, thank you. Rikata, thank you so much. NAMI is here for you, whether it's the helpline, whether it's in support groups that are in your neighborhood, whether it's educational programs that you can take online whether it's our website, which is one of the most visited and trusted resources for mental health information, you know, we're here from you. Thank we're you. a little nonprofit that could, and it just keeps yeah. going. And by me, <laughs> Meredith and Ricardo, well, we're not little anymore, but you know, we're still growing. And by the opportunity to connect with you too, younger generation is changing the game about talking about mental health. This is something you should be very proud of. And uh, my generation battled a little bit. The generation before me fought it tooth and nail. And your generation is changing the game. These are ordinary parts of the human experience. These are things that are done together better than alone. That connection is an anti-anxiety and an antidepressant intervention. And that music, which is a gift you both share, is another way to enjoy connection. So I want to thank you both. And uh, I hope you have a great day. And uh, thank you.